Last year, Germany was the worst performing major economy in the world. Real wages fell, confidence plummeted, and workers are in revolt. The only thing increasing is the cost of living, with Germany experiencing the highest rate of inflation in the post-war period. For decades, it wasn't like this. The German economy was seen as an economic miracle, Wirtschaftswunder, its rapid growth and industrial sector, the envy of the world. But 2023 has seen temporary crisis highlight long-term structural problems, underinvestment, an aging population, a reliance on the Chinese and Russian economy. Is Germany's much vaunted economic model at risk of implosion, or will they be able to shrug off these temporary difficulties? Now, in fairness to Germany, the past few years have thrown a number of real economic shocks, which might have devastated smaller economies. No economy was more reliant on cheap Russian gas than Germany. After the Fukushima nuclear disaster of 2011, Germany closed nearly all its nuclear power stations and placed their faith in cheap Russian gas. Germany's industrial giants demanded cheap energy, and it was hoped that a, such a large trade deal would encourage Russia to move closer to Western democracy. But the dramatic disruption to gas supplies in 2022 caused prices to soar and industry fretted about whether it would be able to keep going at all. Faced with this imminent economic disaster, the government mobilised quite effectively to conserve energy demand and import liquid gas. It was actually quite a big achievement, but it came at a cost. The price of gas still increased and it led to much higher government borrowing. And these energy price increases caused a rare surge in German inflation, causing a loss of both business and consumer confidence. And in 2024, more problems are likely to occur. For example, construction workers are demanding 20% pay rises, trying to catch up for the loss of real wage growth in the past couple of years. And the inflation and cost of living has caused rare industrial disputes, with farmers and train drivers going on strike. The German reputation for efficiency and reliability is under strain. And there's no easy solution. Like much of Europe, Germany faces an ageing population, a fall in the birth rate and an expected decline in population. With a shortage of workers, we could see more wage rises and inflationary pressures in the coming year. Now, a hundred years ago to the day, the German economy was experiencing a deeply traumatic period of hyperinflation. Workers resorted to carrying wheelbarrows full of money to pay with a worthless currency. That shock of hyperinflation and its role in the demise of democracy still reverberates in the German psyche today. And another key element in the German economic psyche is a dislike of government debt. So strong is the fear and dislike of debt that in 2009, the government passed a constitutional amendment limiting the amount of debt the government could borrow. The problem is that in the crisis of 2023, government spending soared to deal with the costs of COVID and the Ukraine war. And when the government wanted to maintain spending, the court struck it down as unconstitutional. The result is that the government has been forced into spending cuts and austerity, exactly at the time when they need to be doing the opposite. As countries in Southern Europe might be able to tell Germany, austerity is never popular and usually has uh, significant economic costs. The real problem is that the private sector spending declining, cuts in government spending are worsening the overall demand in the economy and leading to lower growth and recession. Now, if any country can afford to borrow more, it's Germany. German bond yields are amongst the lowest in the world. It's got a very strong reputation. German debt as a share of GDP is amongst the lowest in the world. It's crazy to be worrying about debt when it's really not a problem. The problem that Germany has is lack of demand and lack of investment. Germany can and should be willing to invest more to help deal with these temporary crises. It also needs more investment in public infrastructure, which has fallen behind in recent years. Germany is facing a self-imposed austerity and recession, which really isn't necessary. However, the German crisis is much more than these temporary headwinds. 
German industry fears it has been left behind by a fast-changing global economy, and when times were good, they failed to invest in the future. For example, the once much vaunted German car industry is struggling to move into the electric car market. Germany's great competitive advantage was in mechanical engineering, but electric cars need software as much as mechanical engineering. The result is that Germany is losing ground to rivals in, say, China or Tesla in America. Exports to China have fallen, hurt by both、uh, slowing Chinese demand, but also a declining competitive advantage. Even Brexit, which disrupted the lucrative export market to the UK, has not helped. Now, German car makers such as Volkswagen still retain a strong brand image, but it was tainted by the. Diesel emission scandal, which saw sales in America fall, some economists worry that German car makers could face a Nokia or even BlackBerry moment, a once dominant industry becoming complacent, and then suddenly overtaken by new firms embracing new technology. Now, this may sound something of a, an exaggeration. German car firms are still in relatively good health. In 2022, Volkswagen. Was the largest car firm in the world, and still saw sales of 156 billion euros in the first half of 2023. However, past success is no guarantee of future success, and if the car industry was to suffer, it would have major negative effect on some of the poorer regions in Germany who rely so heavily on the car industry. However, even away from the German car industry. There's a growing realization that Germany has lagged behind in the adoption of key technological changes. It's fallen behind in the adoption of digital technology, even as the government has cut spending on digitization quite dramatically. Germany ranks only 23rd in a list of digital competitiveness, and many government services are still in the paper era. German industry complain of a raft of excessive regulation and burdens. The Economist reports it takes 120 days for a German firm to receive an operating license, compared to 40 days in Italy and Greece, hardly bastions of、uh, free enterprise. Construction permits take 50% longer than the OECD average, and Germany has become significantly less attractive as a business、uh, location. It has suffered the biggest fall in attractiveness in the past 15 years. Germany and the rest of Europe. Have also been affected by President Biden's Inflation Reduction Act. This was a huge expansion of subsidies to green technology, and it means that to keep up, Europe is forced to follow suit, with big subsidies needed to attract firms willing to invest. But given Germany's self-imposed budget constraints, it has less room for manoeuvre. Germany is also one of the most exposed economies to China. With strong interlinks between the two economies, but geopolitical uncertainties and China's、uh, weaker growth has created causes for concern. Even the euro is not proving as smooth and desirable as the German economy might expect. In the initial decades, the German economy benefited from low inflation and it gained increased competitiveness, leading to a surge in exports and massive current account surplus. But the recent crisis has kind of turned the tables on its head, with Germany having one of the higher inflation rates, leading to lower competitiveness and lower economic growth. There's a risk that the、uh, monetary policy set by the ECB could be too tight for the state of the German economy. There's certainly no recourse to a devaluation, which may have happened in the past. However, despite all these headwinds, and they are very real problems for the German economy, it's still important. Not to lose sight of the underlying strengths that the German economy has: living standards are amongst the highest in the world. It has a strong industrial base, a well-educated and skilled workforce, and the recent crisis, in an optimistic scenario, could trigger much-needed reforms and investment to help the German economy move into a new era. The German economy has also faced bigger problems in the recent past. Reunification in the early 1990s was very expensive and difficult, and in the first half of that decade, it really struggled. But just as people started to talk about Germany's economic decline, it rebounded to once again become one of the strongest economies in the world. 
it would take a brave forecaster to write off the German economy. But at the same time, the challenges facing the economy in the coming year are very real. And it's an unusual shock for an economy used to be one of the strongest in the world to face all these new challenges. If you enjoyed this video, do check this one out on the impact of an aging population for European economies. And please subscribe to this channel. It's new about global economics and there'll be lots of great videos just like this coming soon.